Today, I'm going to show you guys my calculus 1, exam 4. And this is an introduction to integrals. And like always, you guys can go download the file in the description. Try the questions first before you guys watch the video. Let's get started with number 1. We have a crazy looking limit, but it's not so bad because this is just a Riemann sum limit. Here's how you do it. First, pay attention to the 3 over n because this 3 will tell you that b minus a is equal to 3. So the width of the interval will be 3. So it can be going from 0 to 3, 1 to 4, or 7 to 10, etc. But because they are all going from 0, so we know it will be going from 0 to 3. So you know b is not the answer. Anyway though, then we pay attention to this part, especially that we have the 3i over n, that's just the input x. So the function is just square root of 1 plus x, and that's it. That limit represents the area under y is equal to square root of 1 plus x from 0 to 3. And let me just convince you guys that real quick. I will draw you guys a picture. Square root of 1 plus x is just the regular square root graph, but you move to the left one unit. And then we want to go from 0 to 3, so let's say it's somewhere like this. So as you can see, the width of this is 3. And we are going to cut this into n pieces. So that means this is going to be 3 over n. And then you twice that, right, which is just uh, 6 over n. But I will just say 2 times 3 over n. And then triple that, so 3 times 3 over n, and so on, so on, so on. This right here will be the x values that we are going to use. We plug it into the equation x right here to get y. So you can see, this is how we can get the height of this first rectangle. The area of the first rectangle has base width is 3 over n. And we just need to multiply by the height, which is square root of 1 plus 3 over n. Next, we are going to add it with the next rectangle. The base right here is also 3 over n. And then the x value is 6 over n that we have to plug into the equation. And then we can draw our rectangle like this. So the width is 3 over n. The height is square root of 1 plus 6 over n. But that's just the same as 2 times 3 over n. And of course, you can see the next one. It's going to be the same. 3 over n. And then the x value is 9 over n. But that's 3 times 3 over n. So that is going to be 3 over n and then square root of 1 plus 3 times 3 over n. And pay attention to the numbers right here. This is like 1 times 3, 2 times 3, and then 3 times 3. And that's pretty much the i right here. right? i goes from 1 to n. It's called the run index. And of course, you can just put this into a sigma notation, and everybody has the 3 over n, so that's why the answer becomes like this. All right? And of course, I didn't finish writing down the whole limits, but yeah, you guys get the idea. All right, next one. What's the volume of the solid uh, obtained by re rotating the region bounded by y is equal to x to the third power? Let me give you guys the region first. So we have x to the third power. So it looks like this right here, we don't care about the other side. So that's y equals x to the third power. And we go from 0 to 3, of course, non drawn to scale. And we are going to rotate this about the x-axis. So I'll do something like this. After the rotation, this is going to look like this. And you do a mirror image like so. And then you do like an oval at the end like this. So that's the picture of the solid after the rotation. Well, how do we find the volume, though? First, I recommend you guys to draw a little rectangle like this. It doesn't matter if it's a left end or right end, it doesn't matter. And I will also have to remind you guys, if you rotate this rectangle, we are going to get a disk. And that is just a very thin cylinder. So that's what we have right here. And now let me write down the volume of a cylinder, which is just the volume of a disk, is the area of the circle, pi r squared, times the thickness, which is just the height. I like to write down thickness because this is really, really thin. So thickness, I think, is a better term. 
All right, so how do we find the volume of this red disk? Well, the thickness or the height is measured it within dx because that's the change in the x value. And you can see that that's in fact the dx from the area of that rectangle, right? And then you see this right here is y because that's the vertical distance. In fact, that becomes the radius of this thing. So the volume of the red disk is pi times r, which is the y, and you square that, and then you multiply by the thickness, which is dx. But this is just the volume of one disk. You want everything, so you want to add them up. And the super version of adding is integral. And we are in the x world, so we are going to go from 0 to 3 for the x, right? So 0 to 3, that will be the volume. Of course, y is not allowed in the x world, so we will write y as x to the third power because it says so. And then we have the dx at the end. And now we can just integrate it. And notice that this right here is just x to the sixth power. You can do it by hand, but this is a multiple choice, and you are supposed to use a graphing calculator or a calculator that does integral, and you end up with 981.51. So answer choice E. Number three, this is also remote sum question, but it's just written in the expanded form. If you look at the inside, you will notice that we have one is changing and then a two, you know, three and then so on, so on, so on, up to n. So one, two, three, four, up to n, right? They are changing. That's the run index. So if you want, you can actually put this into the usual form, the more compact form. You always have the limit as n goes to infinity. And everybody has the 1 over n, so you can write that down right here first, factor that out here. And then you can put down the summation. Here is the running index i goes from 1 to n, and then we have the input is i over n, like so, and then you square that. And of course, this one tells you b minus a is equal to 1, so you can go from 0 to 1. And then the function is, you know, we have i over n and a square, so the function is just x squared. So you change this into an integral, and then you do it. Integrate this, you get 1 third, and then x to the third power. Then you plug in 1 first, and then that will give you 1 third, and then plug in 0, you get 0, and you subtract them, which you just end up with 1 third. So that's all you have to do it. You don't have to do it the very traditional way. You don't have to quote the sum of the first n positive whole numbers formula. You don't have to. This is it. But if you want to see how to do that, I have a video for you guys as well, so you can check that out. Number four, we're going to find an antiderivative of this function. So let's just go ahead and do it. I will use capital F for the antiderivative. For the first one, we add 1 to the power, we get 3, and divide it by the new power. So that will give us just 1 at the front, and then we have x to the third power. Next, we have 2x, and this is like to the first power, and we add 1 to that, which is 2, and divide it by that, which is, again, will also give us coefficient 1. So that's just x squared. Next, uh, integrating 1, we're finding the antiderivative 1. The root of the what function will give us 1. Well, the answer for that is just x. And that's pretty much it. Don't forget to put on a plus c. Notice, though, none of them have the plus c because the question is only asking for an antiderivative, and c is just a constant. So in fact, it can be any number. a works. So pay attention to the function part. It has x to a third power plus x squared plus x. And right here, one. Another way to do it is you can differentiate all the options and see which one will give you the original question, right? So that's another way to do it. So I'll leave that to you guys. All right, number five. This is one of my favorite. Fundamental theorem of calculus part one. We are differentiating an integral function. Well, 
Derivative and integrals, they pretty much cancel, but notice that here we have x squared. So make sure that you put that in and then use the chain rule, all right? So of course you can cancel them out, and then we're just going to get sine of, we have t to the third power, and now let's enter x squared, and then multiply by the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Fix this a little bit, put the 2x at the front, and we have sine x squared and then to the third power is altogether the sixth power, so a. All right, number six. Integral going from negative one to one of x to the fifth over one plus x squared. You're not supposed to try to find an antiderivative for this. You could, but it's going to be kind of hard. Anyway though, you can use a graphing calculator and figure out the answer for that. The answer for this will be zero. Better yet, let me remind you guys, when we integrate from negative a to a, meaning just like it can be negative 2 to positive 2 or negative 17 to positive 17, if the function inside is an odd function, this right here will give you 0. An odd function is symmetrical about the origin. So an odd function can look like, just give you an example, it can look like this. The cubic function is odd. So you can see that this region and that region, they have the same area, but they will have different signs for the integrals correspondingly. So the areas will cancel. And the other picture is like this, right? Typical sine function. So this region and that region, again, they are the same size, but this is considered negative when you integrate it, and this is positive, so altogether you just get zero. And this right here is indeed an odd function. And to check that, I'll just say if you have f of x equals x to the fifth over 1 plus x squared, you're plugging negative x into the function. So let's just put down negative x like so. Well, on the top we get negative x to the fifth power and then over 1 plus negative x squared. On the top, negative 1 to the 5th power is just negative. And then x to the 5th, like this. So we still have that. Over 1 is 1 plus, but negative 1, right? Think about it as negative 1. Square that, you get positive 1, so you just get x squared. Now, as you can see, we happen to have this negative sign, right? And then we can put it outside like this. The negative right here. And if you look at the blue part, this is just the original function. So as we can see, when we have f of negative x, we can put the negative on the outside, and we have negative f of x. That's why this function is odd. And of course, this function does give you uh, zero if you integrate it, and that's all. Number seven, what's the average value of the function of e to the x from zero to three? So average value, make sure that you remember that, so I'll just say average value. So this is just the average. This right here, you are supposed to add up everything, but again, this is like the super version. You integrate it and you go from zero to three of the function, which is e to the x dx. But remember, whenever you find the average, you have to divide, right? Here, we have to divide it by the interval length. So we do 1 over 3 minus 0. The length of this interval is 3. And of course, you can just go ahead and use your calculator and all that. And let me just work that out real quick. And let me say, what? let me just write it down like this, 6.362. So the answer is that. And if you want to do this by hand, this is how. So we have the one third at the front. Integrating e to the x, well, it's just e to the x. And then you go from 0 to 3. Be extremely careful for this, though. You first enter 3, right? So that's the first part. And then you minus, you enter 0 for the second part. You have 1 third, and you have e to the 0. The reason I said you have to be careful, it's because the first part gives you 1 third e to the third power. And then e to the 0 is 1. 
So you actually have to subtract one third. So this right here could have been the answer as well if the answer choices was not if the answer choices were not written in the decimal form. So one way or the other. Number eight, which of the following is false? All right, integrating secant x times tangent x. In another word, the derivative of function will give you this. Is it secant x? Yes, it is correct. So this right here is true. Now, integrating sin x. Well, the, that's negative cosine x. That's true because if you differentiate negative cosine x, you do end up with positive sin x. So this is also true. How about if you integrate 1 over 1 plus x squared? Well, that's correct. That's the inverse tangent because when you differentiate inverse tangent of x, that does give you 1 over 1 plus x squared. So this is also true. Well, d is incorrect. I know this right here, I put c and d very similar, right? Uh, just to make it slightly an easy equation. But anyway, when you integrate inverse tangent, you don't get you don't get this. It's way more complicated. You have to wait until Cal 2 to see how to do it. All right. Here we are at the workout questions. Number nine, we are going to determine if this inequality, so first we have an integral inside and then we square the result. And then the second part we have, we have squaring the result, squaring the function first, and then integrate from zero to from, from a to b. Is this always true, sometimes true, or never true? And either you provide an example or all that. And let me tell you, this is usually a question I will. Uh, let my student know ahead of time so they can find their counter example or example or proof or whatever. So I'm not going to do this one. So my students, if you guys are watching this, <laughs> you are not going to get the answer from me either. Otherwise, everybody will use my answer, so no. <laughs> I will move to number 10. <laughs> okay, anyway. We are going to express the integral from zero to pi of sine x as a limit of a remote sum. So, this is how we are going to do it. Here, remember, it's always going to be... Okay, let's do this. Let me give you guys a region. I think it's, it's better this way. We are looking at sine x, so it will be like this, all right? So that's going from 0 to pi. Y is equal to sine x. By the way, I should just really write down the answer, because on the test, if you just want to write down the answer, that's totally okay. This is how you do it. To write here as a remote sum, you always have a limit, n goes to infinity, and you do b minus a, we have pi minus 0, which is just pi. So I'll just put pi, and then divide it by n right away, and then you put on the summation, and then you are going to use the running index i, and you always go from 1 to n. Then, here we have the function, just write that down here. And here is the tricky part. For the input, because we are going from 0 to pi, the starting right here is 0, all you have to do is put this and then multiply by an i. So it's just i pi, I guess, i pi over n, and then that's it. So it can be as easy as this. Now let me explain why this is the way it is. First, the region is from 0 to pi under sine x. We are going to cut this width from 0 to pi into n parts. So let me just do like 1, 2, 3. Each part is the delta x, which is the width, right? So it's pi minus 0 over n, which is just delta x being equal to pi over n. So here we have pi over n. The next one is just multiply that by 2, so it's 2 pi over n, and then multiply by 3, right? So just keep adding pi over n, so you have 3 pi over n. And you are going to use this right here as your x values. So you put this right here into here, and you can get the y, and you can draw your rectangle. So the area of the first rectangle is the width pi over n times 
the height is sine and then the x value that we use is pi over n and then you continue we add the width of the second rectangle is still pi over n and here we are using this right here for the x value put that into the function and draw your rectangle and you get the height right here and that's sine of 2 pi over n and then the next one of course this right my picture is not the best though yeah and then plus pi over n and then we have sine of what do we get yeah 3 pi over n so you can see the pattern and for this one i will do it for the last one as well the last x value is technically pi n over n and here because the the y value is zero so you technically don't have a rectangle right but based on the remote sum you you, sh you will draw something like this and then yeah but for the last one you have pi n times sine of n pi over n well pi n same thing right right here i put on um, let me just erase that i guess pi is the same as n pi over n all right now have a look we have one pi inside and then two pi inside and then three pi inside da 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 up to n pi inside so that's the running index and everybody has the pi over n so here we go we take the limit as n goes to infinity so we can have infinitely many rectangles and then we have the pi over n and then we have the summation i goes from 1 to n again that's the running index and then we have our function which is sine and then the input is we have the i goes first and then we have the pi over n so yeah so it depends on how you want to proceed if you are comfortable enough you can write it down like this right away and this is how I usually explain it. Now, number 11, we are going to set an integral for the area bounded by these two curves, and then we will use a graphing calculator to evaluate. So here we go. For the blue one, that is like a weird one, right? Of course, it's just a sideways cubic curve. So the blue one is the, let me write it down, it's this, x equals y to a third power minus 2y and then for the one in black is a line x equals y plus 2 so remember it's always going to be right minus left if you use the horizontal rectangle so here we have a horizontal rectangle method so you can see the width of this is dy because it's a change of y a small change of y so anyway, I'll just set out the integral for you guys. We are going to integrate. Well, the y value here is negative 1 first, right? So we have the area. So we have the area. That's going to be equal to integral going from negative 1 to 1. So going from negative 1 to 2. Because this right here, the y value is at 2. So 1 to 2. And then the function on the right is y plus 2 and then minus y to the third power minus 2y and then we have the dy yeah just like that and then go ahead and use your graphing calculator and then enter the thing that's all so just do that real quick So I get 5.25. So it's nice. It's not approximation. It's actually exactly 5.25. And then we are done. Do not use vertical rectangle. So that's going to be so much harder. So horizontal rectangle is the way to go. All right. 
Number 12, integrating uh, cotangent x. So cotangent is the same as cosine x over sine x. And then, of course, we do u sub, that u equal the bottom sine x, du is equal to cosine x dx. And as we can see, we have the cosine x dx right here, so that's the du. And then this right here is the integral 1 over sine x is our u, and then we have the du on the side. Integrating 1 over u, we get ln, absolute value of u, and u is sine x. So we can just put that down right here, and then we're done. Put a plus c, that's it. Number 13, this right here, even though we use u substitution, we cannot cancel all the x on our side, but you'll see this is still going to work out nicely. Let u equal to 3 plus x, right? Just the inside and then try it and then see what happens. Differentiating both sides, du will just be dx because the derivative of 3 is 0, the derivative of x is 1, and then we have the dx. So the first step is we get the integral x times the square root. 3 plus x is the u inside, and then dx is the same as du. But here's the thing. x is not allowed in the u world. So what do we do? Don't worry. We can look at this right here, subtract 3 on both sides, and we can say x is equal to u minus 3. So we can say this is the integral, and then for the x, we can write it as u minus 3, and then we have u to the 1 half power for the square root of u, du. As you can see in the u world, we can just use the reverse power rule. So go ahead, distribute it first, still have to integrate u to the first times u to the 1 half, you add the exponents, so you get 3 half, 1 plus 1 half, yeah? And then minus 3 u to the 1 half power, and we are in the u world. For the first one, we add 1 to the power, 3 half plus 1 is 5 over 2, and divided by that, we get 2 over 5. For the other one, we add 1 to the power, that will give us 3 over 2, and then divided by that, which is multiplying by its reciprocal, so it's like this. So, first, we get 2 over 5, and let me write down the u first, and then 5 over 2. Then minus 3 and 3 cancel, so it's just 2, and then we have u to the 3 over 2. I don't need to put on a plus c yet because we're not entirely done, because we have to write the u as 3 plus x, and then that's pretty much it. All right, number 14, we are going to integrate this thing, sine x plus cosine x squared, expand it. So multiply this out, we get sine squared x plus 2 sine x, cosine x, and then plus cosine squared x, dx. Before we integrate, here's the thing that we can do. Look, we have the sine squared x plus cosine squared x Together, they are just equal to 1. That's great, huh? And then, this right here, 2 sine x, cosine x, that's the same as sine of 2x, thanks to the double angle identity. All right, so we can integrate this. Integrating 1 in the x world, we just get x. Integrating sine, we get cosine, and then the input stays the same. And the derivative of 2x is a 2. And we are doing the antiderivative, so make sure you divide it by 2, and that's it. So of course, you can also do this on the side real quick. Integral of sine of 2x dx, you can do u sub that u equal to 2x. du is just 2 dx. dx is du over 2, and that's why you have to divide it by 2. So this right here is the integral sine of 2x is the u, and then dx is the du over 2. So that's why we have the 1 half, and then we have the sine. The integral of sine is negative cosine, actually. The integral of negative, oh, think for the added, I did it on the side. It's negative cosine 
see, I made mistake too, and I'm gonna fix it. So just be careful with that, and you'll be good to go. And then we have the plus C for that, right? So this right here should have been a negative, so let me just erase that. The integral of sine gives us negative sine. Extremely common mistake, if and all, <laughs> I got it wrong too. All right, proving the volume of a cone is this formula by using integration. Here's how you can do it. First, we can start with a line like this, and then we can do a rotation, either with the x-axis or the y-axis, the x-axis will be easier. Because imagine if you have a line which you have a triangle like this, rotate it, you will end up with a cone, like so. So this right here is the volume of revolution. But now we have to come up with an equation though. Here, we want this to be our radius, our call that r, and we want this thing right here to be our height. So I will say this x for here is h. And now we have to get a formula for this. And the line, you see, we have rise over run, right? r over h. So I can just say the formula is y equals r over h times x. So that's the equation. And again, start with a rectangle here. And then if you rotate the rectangle, you get a disk. And this right here is the y. That's the radius of the cylinder. And then we have the dx, which is for the thickness. The, area, the volume of this red disk is pi y squared and then multiply by dx. And we want to integrate this going from 0 to h because the x value here is h. And we want to go from 0 to h. That will give us the volume, so volume of a cone. All right, here we go. This right here, we get the, let me write it down like this. We get the integral going from 0 to h. We can put a pi and then y is our function here. That's r over h, and then x, and then we square that, and dx. So this right here, let's put out the constants. So we have the pi, and then r over h, both to the second power. So we have r squared over h squared, and then we focus on the integral going from 0 to h, x squared, and then we have dx. This is not integral sign. It's just an arrow. So on the outside, we have pi r squared over h squared. And now let's focus on this part. Integrating that, we add 1 to the power, which is 3, and then divide it by that, so it's 1 third. So aha, that's how we get 1 third. So 1 third, x to the third power, and we will have to go from 0 to h. So we have the pi r squared over h squared, and then put the h inside, we get one third h to the third power. And when we put zero into the x, we get zero. Uh, I'll also show you guys that, just to be more clear. So we have the one third, and then we have the zero, and then we have the third power. Yeah, that's just zero anyway. So all in all, we are looking at pi r squared over h squared times one third h to the third power. And guess what? h squared and two of them cancel. So ladies and gentlemen, the volume of a cone, we can finally say that it's indeed one third. And then we have pi r squared, which is like the area of the circle, and then h. So if you look at this part, pi r square h is the volume of a cylinder, and if you want to get a cone, you just get a third of the cylinder. So that's it. That's it. All right, last question. What's the area between the curves e to the x and also negative x squared plus 5? So let me give you guys a picture first. This is how e to the x looks like. 
and another one is negative x squared plus 5 and that's how it looks like like this now draw to scale of course the hard part for this is to find the intersections right here and of course the region that we want is this part the area in between so for this you will definitely have to use your graphing calculator so make sure that you graph e to the x and also negative x squared plus 5 and then second calc and then intersection first curve second curve and then you get the uh, intersections and let me just put that down for you guys real quick the first x value here is approximately negative 2.211 so let's just use three decimal places and then this x value here is 1.241 and now we are ready to go we want the area so the area of the region is just going to be integrating we go from the lower x value to the upper x values 1.241 the top function is the red one which is negative x squared plus 5 and then subtract the bottom x bottom function which is that dx and let me just work that out real quick integral negative x squared plus 5 and minus e to the x and then we go from negative 2.21 1 to 1.241 1 and ladies and gentlemen i get approximately 11.3448 so i'll run up so 11.345 so that's it and if you guys need to see how i do the calculator work you can check the description i will just show you guys how to do the um intersection that's it